going on y'all? Tech me out here and iOS 16 is looking good. And for those of you that are curious about which phones it'll work for, it does work for iPhone 8 and all the phones after that. Now in this video, I wanna talk about not just the features of iOS 16 that I feel are worth knowing, but also how to go about, you know, setting them up or activating those features. And also my thoughts thus far of the beta and how it works. Now, one of the first things I wanna talk about is the lock screen customization. And I feel like honestly, this is how you can kind of look at somebody's device and tell that they're running iOS 16 because this is one of the more visual changes. So currently my lock screen looks like this where I have limitless at the bottom. But if I wanted to change this, I can long press on it. Well, it does have to first scan my face. Then I can long press and then I can swipe through all of the, um, custom lock screens that I've made. One that I really like is this one here with my nieces. And you'll notice here on the lock screen as well that you can make your photo be on top of the time, which gives it this kind of 3D effect. And I wanna say it only works for live photos, but I'm not 100% sure. So if you long press on your lock screen here, you can either add a new photo or you can customize an existing one. Another thing that you can do is also assign it to a focus mode. So for example, if I choose my work focus mode, it will change my wallpaper and my home screen to reflect this look right here, which is actually pretty nice because you'll also notice on the lock screen, not only do you have that depth effect, but you also have widgets. But let's take a look at how you would set one of these up. So we're gonna go to customize and then it breaks it down in somewhat of a similar format to me to like an Apple watch. The first thing you can customize is what appears in the top line. You got some suggestions here, but I personally like using the date here, but it's nice to know I have my options. Then beneath that, you can tap the time. You can change the font of the time here. If you tap this world here, you can change it to one of these items as well, but we're gonna keep it there. And you can also change the color and even the, oops, there we go. And even the gradient of that or the intensity of that color. So we're just gonna keep it like that. And then behind us, you can see that we have something else that we can add, which are widgets. So you can basically add a small or a large widget. I think if you choose to do the small ones, you can add up to four. And if you choose the large, you can only add up to two. I'm gonna say, let's do batteries. And I want the small one. And let's add calendar. And I want this one that has my events for the day. And then you can also add home widgets. Noise. But as you can see now, we can no longer see my face. So I'm actually gonna remove those. I just wanted to show you how they work. <laughs> the other thing that you can customize up here is the background. So if you swipe through like this, it'll give you different backgrounds to use but that's how the photo looked originally, but I liked this kind of pink one here. But outside of that, if you go down here to the bottom right, you can tap on these three dots, and this will let you turn on perspective zoom and depth effects. So if I turn off depth effects, you'll see that the clock now is in front of my head. But if I want it to be behind my head, I'm gonna turn it back on, and as you can see, it shifts right on back. The other thing that you can change is like, right now I have it set so that my background color is pink, but if I wanted to change that, then I can come in here, choose a different color and the intensity and how it looks. I can go a little more orange if I want it, choose that. But if I wanted to change the picture, I would just tap this little photo icon down here and it'll pull up my photo gallery so that I could do so. But I don't want to, so I'm gonna hit done. Now I have a preset lock screen that I can use. The one thing that I will say is finicky for me is that, let me create a new one. As you can see, if you're not choosing, you know, one that you've already customized, this is what you will be greeted with. My bad for going out of order, but ultimately you can choose your own photos or choose something from one of these predefined categories. Like I could tap people and it'll show different people that I could use on the lock screen, or I could choose nature, cities, things like that. Then you also have the option for an emoji lock screen, which I think is super cute because you can come in here and swipe to the right or left and choose all these different like effects or you can tap here where it shows the emoji and choose the different emojis that you want to appear. Now, if I tap the three dots, the only thing you can change here is the background color. So let's say I wanted to make it yellow and then boom. Now I have this emoji lock screen, which is... Oh. So like I could set as a wallpaper pair, meaning what's on the lock screen is on the home screen. But say for instance, I want a different one. Then I could choose customize home screen and then tap here and choose if I want to have the blur on or off. Then I'm gonna just say off. 
and choose a different photo that I would like on my um, home screen. So I'm gonna choose this one and then I'm gonna select done. So now I should be able to tap done again. If I choose this, it should have the emojis as my lock screen and this is my home screen. But if I wanted to change just the home screen, it's not that easy because currently as it stands, if I go into my settings and I go down to wallpaper and I choose customize on the home screen and I say add new wallpaper and I choose to have, let's just say this one. As you can see, it takes me to the lock screen and it makes me change my lock screen and my home screen and not just my home screen. So I can't figure out currently how to just change my home screen. That's just something to note. Now this next feature is one that I thought was really interesting and it's the option to actually have haptic feedback when you're typing, which I think is definitely like a familiar experience for those coming from Android to iOS because I know when I go from my iPhone to Android, I always turn that off because it's typically on by default. So yeah, if you ever wanted the vibration feedback while you're typing, you can now have that. To activate it, all you have to do is go to your settings, sounds and haptics, then go down to keyboard feedback and turn on haptic. So now as I'm typing, I'm gonna get that haptic feedback as I do so. Now this next one is a small one, but still one worth knowing. And that's the fact that with iOS 16, you can actually see the Wi-Fi password to the Wi-Fi network that you're connected to. So in order to see that, you just go to your settings, Wi-Fi, and then you would tap on your network and then password, it scans your face, and then shows you the password. So if you ever needed to see that, you can now easily do so from within here. Now, another new feature we have is the option to add multiple stops within the Maps app when you're getting directions. So let's say I was going to a specific location like this room right here. And what you'll notice here is now I have an option to add a stop. For those of you that are curious how many you can add, you can add up to about 15. And you can even go to the Maps app on your computer, get all of this done and then share it instantly to your iPhone. Now the next thing I wanna talk about are the new changes within messages. So I personally love that you can now actually mark a text as unread. So in case you find yourself in those scenarios where you cannot respond in the moment, you can just swipe to the right and have it marked as unread so that it still shows up as a new message. Now on top of that, you also now have the option to edit your messages and you can edit it within a certain time span. I wanna say 15 minutes after sending it. So for those moments where we have those little hiccups or we send the message to the wrong person lord knows mm. definitely been there you can hit undo so that it removes the message out of the thread but i will say they do get a notification that you did remove the message so it'll be there in the fine print of the thread so to edit it you just long press on it and then you can hit undo and it's gone and as you can see, you do get the notification there that you unsent the message. And just like when you undo a message, the person also will get a notification that you edited the message also. And this only works for iMessage. So that means if you see a green bubble, you're using SMS and these same things do not apply. All right, now this next feature is one that I have personally been wanting to test since they announced it. And it's the ability to watch a movie together with their messages. So I have Joel here. I don't think y'all have formally had the opportunity to meet Joel, but he is the man behind the scenes filming things and editing things at this time. So you wanna tell people where they can find you on IG real quick? Wow. <laughs> All right, so to get things going, Joel is gonna open up the Apple TV app on his phone. Now it does work with other apps as well, but I'm not sure if they're currently active right now, but I can at least say that this one is. So he's going to start a video and then hit the share button in the top right, and then you tap share play. So he has my name in there. We got two options here at the bottom near your keyboard. So we're gonna choose the option messages. That way we can watch this video together via the Messages app without actually having to go through FaceTime and get on the phone and do all of that. So the interesting thing here you'll notice is that it fires up like a FaceTime call. Now that I'm in our conversation, I can see the option to join it here. And then I'm gonna hit start, or actually he hit start. So it started up on both of our ends. So as you can see, we got the video going. So I'm gonna say, this is so cool. I like this a lot, y'all. Like we can literally watch a movie together. I don't have to feel committed to having it take up my entire screen. I can go on and do other things on my phone while still watching this with him. So you'll notice here if I skim it, we both get the notification that I moved the playback 
for the video that we're watching here. And I love the fact that I don't have to stay within the video either. So I can just navigate away and start doing other things on my phone so I don't have to feel committed to like letting it dominate the screen if I wanna maybe get on Instagram. It's features like this that are a part of the Apple ecosystem that just kinda like, just claws, just claws in from Apple on your neck, man. And I say that because yes, there are apps that offer this, you know, but the thing about the way Apple does it is that it's integrated into the phone, so there's no extra setup or anything like that. Imagine you're trying to watch a movie with your mom or your dad or somebody, and all you have to do is tell them, hey mom, hey dad, go into our conversation within the Messages app, tap join. That's it. But if you use the other apps, you gotta tell them to download it, probably set up an account. Now something else that changed is the weather app, so you get more information at a glance. You can basically tap here on the um, hourly forecast and see a detailed forecast of all these different things regarding the weather by not only the hour, but also see the hourly forecast for the next 10 days. But you can get the UV index per day, you can get the wind per day and per hour, the humidity per day and per hour. Personally, I just really need to know. The precipitation, <laughs> the chances of precipitation. Grammar detection with voice dictation. So right now I'm speaking so that we can see how well it dictates or dictates my grammar without me having to tell it different punctuations. I wonder how it's doing. That should have been a question, right? So it seems like it can kind of determine what's a question and what's not, but it is a little hit or miss. Would you agree? But I do like this. Happy emoji. Seems accurate enough, I'd say. More accurate than not. Now, another thing you can do is actually create what's known as like a PNG image, which is basically your subject in your image without a background. So in this case, I have my beautiful niece here. So I can basically remove her from the background by just simply long pressing. And you'll see that it kind of like outlines her really quickly. And I can either copy it to like my messages app and just hit paste and boom. It has this PNG image of her, which I think it did a really good job at cutting out the background there. Or if I want it, I can long press on this and hit share and then go about sharing it that way. Yeah, I think it did decent. Okay, now another option you have, which I think is a long overdue, is the ability to lock your hidden and your recently deleted photo albums. So you'll see down here at the bottom in my photos app where I have hidden and recently deleted, I now have a lock. So if I tap on it, you can no longer access it unless you know the passcode. So it is truly hidden and truly private because before, mm, yeah. <laughs> Why do we have to wait so long for this? That's the real question. But anyway, it's here or will be here. Now the way that you go about turning this on is to go into your settings and you're gonna go down to photos and here within the album section, you have use face ID. You're gonna make sure that's turned on. And once you flip that toggle to turn that on, it'll then give you the locked photo albums. Now, another cool iOS 16 feature, especially for my fellow spotlight lovers, is the ability to search straight from the home screen by just tapping search down here at the bottom. You can still tap there as well, regardless if it's saying search or showing the little page indicators, it'll still get you here. And the nice thing is Spotlight will search your app store, maps, mail, messages, Safari, notes, and contacts for whatever you type in. All right, but that is gonna be it for this video, y'all. I think we talked about quite a few features, but I'm still, you know, running this through its paces, so I'm sure I'll discover more things because you know they have little nuggets tucked in, you know, things that, they don't always show in the keynote that you find out as you're using it. So with that said, feel free to check me out on Instagram to find out when I'm dropping some more content or just to see what's going on with me in general. But let me know down below in the comment section, what is your favorite iOS 16 feature so far? I would have to say for myself, it's probably the ability to undo the messages and edit the messages. Cause yeah, I be moving too fast sometimes. So yeah, I'm gonna end it here y'all before I ramble some more. As always, thanks for taking the time out to let me tech you out.